welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to give y'all an update on current GLP-1 medications for weight loss. You know, there's been a lot of back and forth, ups and downs, and a lot of new information about GLP-1 medications, especially in terms of compounding and cost. So I'd like to give y'all an update on those two things. Let's first start with compounding. I think that in the next couple of months, we're gonna see compounding forms of semaglutide and terzepatide, which are the compounded versions of Wagovi and Zetbound being phased out. This is because the FDA recently announced that terzepatide is no longer on the shortage list. Compounding pharmacies have been allowed to make exact copies of Zetbound and with Govi because they have been on the shortage list. So when that's taken away, compounding pharmacies have more difficulty showing the need to have exact copies made. Now, some compounding pharmacies are adding things like vitamin B6 or vitamin B12, or they're changing the dosing a little bit, like instead of 2.5 milligrams of a medication, they only offer two milligrams. But at the end of the day, it still is essentially a copy of the patented medication, terzepatide and semaglutide. I think one of the reasons why the pharmaceutical companies are just coming down so hard on compounded versions of their medication is because they're safe and they work and they're cheaper. At the end of the day, pharmaceutical companies have spent billions and billions of dollars formulating these medications. And their thought is if we spend billions and billions of dollars formulating and testing these medications and get a patent on them, and then our patent isn't protected, why even bother doing that? So really at the end of the day, this is very financially driven as with most things in this world these days. So what does this mean if you're currently taking a compounded version of terzepatide or so maglutide and what are your options going forward? So one option is to use the direct to consumer pharmacy through Eli Lilly. It's called Lilly Direct. You'll receive individual vials of name brand Zepbound, also known as terzepatide. The 2.5 milligrams, which is the lowest dose, starts at $349 per month. You'll get four individual vials that are single use, meaning that you'll insert your syringe, you'll draw all of the medication out, and then you'll subcutaneously inject that into your skin. They also offer five milligrams, 7.5 milligrams, and 10 milligrams, and that cost jumps to $499 dollars a month. You may notice that the top two doses, the 12.5 and the 15 milligrams are not offered. I think the reason for that is because they don't want people to just draw out half of the medication in order to try to reduce cost. The vials that Lily Direct are sending to your doorstep are meant to be single use. Can they be used more than once? Can you microdose, meaning you draw out half of the medication, give it, and then a week or two later you give the other half? You, you can, but you need to be trained on how to withdraw medication from a syringe in a sterile manner. And at this point, that's not recommended. The other option is to get name brand semaglutide, also known as Wagovi, at your pharmacy through cash pay. Nova Nordisk is now allowing patients to go to their pharmacy and pay cash, $499 for any dose of Wagovi. Studies have shown on average with semaglutide, also known as Wagovi, patients lose about 15% of their total body weight. Whereas with terzepatide, also known as Zepbound, people tend to lose on average about 20%. So if you are cash paying out of pocket for these medications, I would strongly encourage you to use terzepatide, also known as Zepbound because the cost is the same. Patients also tend to have less nausea and side effects with Zetbound, also known as terzepatide. Now, in terms of dosing, in order to try to maximize and stretch the medication out to try to get more bang for your buck, there's been an interesting study that was recently published that I'll put the credentials below if you wanna look at yourself, that has shown that patients that took the injection every two weeks instead of every one week, obviously that's a 50% savings, they lost about 75% of the weight that they would have lost if they had used the medication every week. Meaning that if you're on the max dose of the medication and instead of taking it every week, the way the studies have shown and directed, 
If you're doing it every other week, you'll get on average about 75% of that. So you won't get the maximal benefit if you're taking it every two weeks, but you still will get some amount of weight loss. So that's another option. But know that you have the freedom and flexibility to take it no more frequently than every seven days, but then you can extend the dose, the time in between. So you can go, you can try every 10 days or you can try every 14 days. Will you have the exact result as if you did it every seven days? Probably not. But I think these medications are so beneficial that being on some amount of the medication is better than nothing. Especially if you've been on the medication and you're struggling with getting the medication now because of cost or availability. This is a way to bridge the gap between being on the medication as it was designed and going off of it completely. Is it ideal? No, it's not ideal. My hope is that eventually the pharmaceutical companies will reduce the cost. Although now that we're eliminating compounded forms of the medication, I don't think they have much incentive to do that. Remember at the end of the day that I am a doctor, I'm double board certified in internal medicine and obesity medicine, but I'm not your doctor. So please go talk to your own doctor before doing any of the things that I mentioned today. And while I believe in the power of these medications, I am disappointed that they're not more accessible to patients currently. And I hope that that will change as time goes on. Thanks for joining me.